You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. I should say welcome back to The Coffee Hour. It's National Lutheran Schools Week, <laughs> and we're actually going to one of our favorite Lutheran schools today, right here in St. Louis, Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Joining us today, the Reverend Dr. David Lewis, Associate Professor of Exegetical Theology, Director of the Master of Divinity and Residential Alternate Route Programs at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. I might do some other things too, but those are the things I have on the list. Dr. <laughs> Lewis, thanks so much for joining us on the Coffee Hour today. Well, thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here as always. And the Reverend Dale Ward, Senior Media Producer for Communications at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, my pleasure. So recently, it's been a while since we talked about the Faith and Film and the, the Film Festival at mm-hmm. Concordia Seminary. Now, things changed because of COVID, but there was still the contest. So we want to dig into this contest and what happened with this, because you were, last time we talked to you, were accepting opening up submissions for uh, films for this film contest at Concordia Seminary. Where did the idea for this begin? Well, the and Dale could probably speak to this um better than I could. But while meeting to plan the Faith and Film Festival, the various members of the committee had suggested, you know, what if we were to have a film contest, which is often uh, a feature at film festivals. You invite filmmakers to submit their work, and then it's evaluated, and then several are chosen as winners. And so we thought it might enhance what we're doing here at Concordia Seminary with our Faith and Film Festival if we were to have our own short film contest. Mm-hmm. So, Dale, how how did the, that submission process go? I'm really curious how many submissions you got, because I heard a number of finalists and that number was high. So. <laughs> it went extraordinarily well. So we, so we had the oh, theme of hope. We didn't want to just open it up to whatever. We had a theme of hope. But I think one thing we didn't think of, we, we initially, well, I mean, the whole time, it was a free submission contest. And so it opened up on June 30th and mm-hmm. we received... I don't know, at least a couple of hundred that first day. And uh, I'm like, wow, that was not unexpected. And then I thought, well, maybe people, you know, they see a free film festival and they just submit things and it'll slow down. It never slowed down. I tried to keep up so that I watched the new ones that came in every day and we were getting hundreds every day. We ended up getting 1,294 submissions. Uh, And this was over uh, from, from... June 30th to October 15th. And they were coming in every day. There was never, there's not, I don't think there's ever a day we didn't at least get five. So yeah, it was incredible. I, and I think a lot of it had to do with, because it was free, but I, we got some great movies. So tell us about the over 1000 submissions that you got to view, <laughs> that you got to review the, the, like I'm sure we're across the the spectrum of of uh, film. The the common theme was hope, right? Correct. So, what did you get to see in those oh, one thousand plus films? Well, the first thing I noticed is that most of them were not very hopeful. In fact, they were just the opposite. There were so many movies that, with despair. And as I got into these, I mean, I watched several hundred before I even saw one that was in it remotely hopeful, and it. Uh, about halfway through it, I, I started thinking, why am I in such a funk? Because I was watching these, you know, every day, some days, most of the day, for four most of the day. And I finally realized I'm just so immersed in these hopeless movies. You know, it's like watching Sophie's Choice over and over and over again for, for months. But slowly but surely, we started getting in some that had hope. And what was... Part of it, too, is, I mean, I watched every one of them. I gave each one a shot because with a a movie on hope, you you never quite know how it's going to end up. And so you have to, you know, to watch it to see if it ends up with hope or ends up hopeless. And it just, I mean, it just showed me that that there is uh, hurt and and hopelessness all across the world because we got we got films from 95 different countries, which is. I think almost half of the of the world. So it's it's just bad all out there. But it was nice to to see that even if they thought about the idea of hope and Concordia Seminary and the gospel of Christ, that you know, maybe we planted some seeds just for having the short film festival. 
I have so many questions about all of these movies now. But <laughs> Dr. Lewis, which ones did you get to watch? Did you did you, did you have the privilege of watching all one thousand of them? I, I I did not. Dale narrowed the field to forty films, and then those of us who joined him in serving as judges viewed those forty films, and then were able to rate them on a number of categories, including you know director, cinematography, original story, and of course hope, and. I spent eh, maybe about eight hours plus uh, viewing those 40 films. And these had all been films that were Dale approved. And so <laughs> there weren't really any turkeys in the bunch. And as far as I was concerned, they're worth viewing. And, and then I didn't have to experience any of the despair that Dale was subjected to. <laughs> so he actually uh, did... Uh, Good, a good spiritual service for all the rest of us who joined him in, in rating these films. Because I, I, rem I remember him talking about how you know, how these films were about despair, not hope. And I was not looking forward to uh, watching these films. But thanks to Dale, he narrowed the field to 40, and which is still a lot. But and so I spent about eight hours plus watching those films carefully. Yeah, I remember watching one. I was I started cheering movies on because there was one. It was almost the Good Samaritan story. It was uh, I think it came from Iran, which uh, incidentally had the most submissions. It was the country of Iran, but it was revolving around this two cars at a gas station, and one of the the cars they were fighting with a, a girl and two guys, and then there was another guy in another car watching this, and they, they end up going down the road and and meeting up, and the guys kicked the girl out. And left her there, and I you know then the, uh, the the one guy by himself pulls over to help, and I'm like cheering him on, you know, yes, yes, this is gonna be, and it was very, very well done. It was an excellent shot, music, the acting, it was, it was a, it was a ten. So I'm cheering this movie on, but then he left her there, <laughs> the end, and I, that, you know, I saw uh, so many of those. It was like basically, you know, there was those that were not that well made and were not hopeless. There were those that were very well made, but very hopeless. And then there was those that were hopeful, but maybe not the best quality. And then there was those that were, you know, knocked it out of the park. And really that was the 40 because I tried to get it down even less. And there was just 40 movies that was, they were all really well. And it, we had documentaries, narrative stories. We had a music video. There was a lot of really high quality animation. Yep. I was so animation. surprised at the animation. I mean, it was Pixar quality, but <laughs> every, every genre you could think of, we had a good film come through. Dr. Lewis, tell us about the criteria for narrowing down those 42 what how many finalists did you have to narrow it down to well there's there's four final films and and i would say for me i mean again a film could be well made but not very hopeful and so i was looking for uh, a message of hope for each of the the films that as i was rating them and i took the the category you know from one to ten how hopeful is this film and you know, for me, it had to be the effect of the film. In other words, when the film is over, I actually feel hope. You know, if I feel despair, this film has not worked. You know, if it's supposed to be about hope, and if I, if the film is over it, when it's concluded, and I feel hopeful, I understand hope. Then I'm gonna, I would, I would rate it more highly than another film. Then I also have one other secret criteria. I would show the films to my wife, and she tends to be very emotional especially with happy films and sad films. And so if it elicited tears from her, that's a good sign that it's a 10. It's a secret. Criteria. Yeah, that's that is kind, of a, well, you know, kind of a secret criteria, but in other words, I value, I value her opinion. And if it's, if she's moved by a film, then I always have to stop and say, wow, I, I didn't really think much of that film before, but if, if she likes it, it must be good. So, and so I, I did yeah. show a couple of the films that I really liked to her and it, it, it got the tears, you know. <laughs> what can you tell us about the four finalists? Well, again, and that speaks what, what Dr. Lewis just said, because the it had to be 10 minutes or less. Uh, the average was probably five or six minutes, but to, to bring someone to tears in six minutes, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a strong piece of, of work right there. All of the, the finalists were narrative. And again, that's just how it happened to, to play out. One was from Russia 
<laughs> oh, that's yeah. So most of these were in a different language. So I ended up reading a lot of these. So that one's called The Winner. It was from Russia. It had to do with uh, some gentlemen from uh, World War II and meeting up again in present time. There was uh, one called The Absurd Man, which was a, a little fable, kind of a quirky little movie that I, I really enjoyed that one. And then My Lovely Man, which is, uh, again, another kind of uh, fable that you, you meet these people for 10 minutes and you, they, they draw you right into their world. And it's called My Lovely Man. That was very well done. And then one called You Know Me, which was I had to do with COVID directly and how people couldn't connect through the COVID quarantines and whatnot and how that affected this man and his son and especially the, the father who is slipping into dementia. So a very powerful 10 minute movie that is. The, so we have it narrowed down to four finalists. Where will we find the winner? So later today, I believe, I mean, the film festival was supposed to be happening tonight. And since we couldn't do that because of COVID restrictions, we are going to uh, release these movies tonight on the ConcordiaTheology.org website, where you can uh, read a little bit about them and watch the films and uh, make your own observations. And, and hopefully that you enjoy them all. Check it out tonight, concordiatheology.org. Congratulations to the four finalists as well mm -hmm. and to the winner to be announced. What a just fantastic uh, gathering of creativity. Yeah. And uh, now we want to watch, well, I don't know about all 1,000, but we want to watch all, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Dr. David Lewis, Associate Professor of Exegetical Theology and uh, Director of Master of Divinity and Residential Alternate Route Programs at Concordia Seminary, St. Louis. Thanks so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Good to be here. And the Reverend Dale Ward, Senior Media Producer, Concordia Seminary, St. Louis. Thanks so much for being our guest on The Coffee Hour. That was great. We'll uh, see you at the movies. <laughs> You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Oh, 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 o